Four years ago, I strapped a BBSHD to my specialised fat boy. It was one of the best decisions that I've ever made. This bike has been used for commuting, towing the kids on the school run, going to the beach and parks, shopping trips, you name it. This bike has been there and done it. The BBSHD motor has never skipped a beat and it's been ridden all year round in temperatures as low as minus 30. I figure that over the last four years, it's probably saved me well over $20,000 in costs if I were to have used a car instead. That is just the monetary aspect. I can't possibly put a price on the sheer joys of towing my kids to school through the Ottawa Valley or blasting through fresh snowdrifts in the winter. This bike was also the birth of what is now the high voltage e-bike YouTube channel and community. So I'm excited to get the opportunity to go back to the start and do another install of the BBSHD. This time though, I have three years of experience making videos, so I'll be able to do a much better job of filming the install, including the latest version of the high voltage upgrade kit with the ASI Back855 controller. My friend in town had told me last year they had this awesome frame to put a BBSHD on. Unfortunately, COVID screwed up those plans in more ways than one, so it's been postponed. The last week though, I finally got to take a look at the bike and also try out a very simple tool I made to help people determine the bottom bracket width of the BBSHD they need, as well as see if they're likely to be any problems with the chain line or perhaps need spacers. So let's have a look at the frame. So what we have here is a specialized big hit and we're going to be evaluating this to see whether we can use it with a BBSHD and we're going to be taking off the bottom bracket and using this new tool here and seeing what kind of bottom bracket size that we might need for this bike. So this is the specialized big hit with the bottom bracket removed and uh, we're just going to use this tool here to see if the BBSHD will fit through and whether we use the 83mm version or the 100mm version and if you can see this in here you can see that the BBSHD will fit flush with this frame and not interfere with the swing arm on the back. There's a little bit of clearance there. We might have to use a little bit of spacing, um, but not much. So we can use a normal 73 to 83 millimeter BBSHD, and this will give us a really nice chain line straight back to the rear cassette there. This bike is the first version specialized made of the big hip. It has decent spec components and was not a cheap bike back in 2003 and 2004 when this particular model was made. It was squarely aimed at the downhill market. The frame is a bit dated these days, but what it does have though is strength. Right now it's not really usable on the trails as the frame is heavy and the back wheel is small. However, with the BBSHD and the high voltage kit on it, this should transform the bike into a machine that's great fun to ride on trails, as well as dirt and gravel roads. We will be going for torque and climbing ability rather than a silly top speed. Something that will be fun to ride on the endless trails that you get in the local area. The next video in this series should be a dry fit of the motor and see if we need any spacers as well as what kind of chain ring as well as other parts that we're going to need before it gets torqued onto the frame. Thanks for watching the channel. Cheers.